Hi, this is Troy again. Uh, we've talked about making metric conversions and understanding those you know, units of measure that you're working with, uh, whether it's amps, volts, ohms, whatever it is. Uh, you've got the tera at the high end, then you've got the giga, the mega, the kilo, the units themselves. Going down into the decimals, you've got milli, micro, nano, and pico. We talked about the acronym that will help you to remember how to list those out. That giant megaphone killed one million microscopic naked people. We also have the acronym that helps you remember how that decimal point moving left or right correlates to moving up or down in those units of measurement. Let ugly roses die. So we're able to, to work with those to get those into the sorts of units that we need them in. The other big thing that we want to talk about and make sure that we're comfortable with is using a scientific calculator that's going to help us with the calculations that we need to make. Most of the calculations you're going to be doing, you're not going to be actually working it out by hand. You're going to need to be able to use the calculator. And so we do want to take a look at that. You do want to make sure that you have a calculator that has engineering mode on it. I have a TI-86 that we're going to be using here. If you have a, a Texas Instruments calculator, it will be very similar. Um, again, as long as you have a calculator that has engineering mode on it, uh, you're going to be able to use that. So that's one of the first things that we want to check. When we look at the TI-86, and most of the TIs work basically the same way, um, there is a menu which uh, is referred to as the mode. And so when I hit the mode button, I've got to hit second to get it. When I hit the mode button, it actually opens up my menu here. And on the top line in this particular case, um, it could be on a different line. But what you're looking for are the different modes that are available. I have three options, normal, scientific, and engineering. And so that's how you know that your calculator has an engineering mode on it, is that that's going to be one of your options. Um, and the engineering mode is what we want to make sure that we are in uh, as we are using the calculator. So once we have engineering selected there, I can hit the exit button to get back out of the menu. And now my calculator should be in that mode. Here's a quick way to test and see whether it is. Uh, let's take something simple like uh, 14,000. And if I just enter 14,000 and hit the enter button, then the display on my calculator is showing it in a different way. It's showing it 14E3. What it did is it took 14,000 and automatically converted it to engineering notation for me. So let's think about this for a second. Suppose these were watts that we were talking about. I had 14,000 watts. What would that be in correct engineering notation? Well, we know that we want between one and three numbers to the left of the decimal. So that means I would need to move my decimal to the left three places. That would give me 14. And while normally what I would say then is that is kilowatts, the calculator doesn't have those letters in it. So what they did is they put the E telling me here's the exponent, and then they put a 3. So this is one of the reasons, and I'm going to, to switch back to the chart we looked at earlier for just a moment. This is one of the reasons that it is going to be very important for us to keep in mind those exponents that go along with each one of these. That E3 on the calculator is telling me that's 10 to the third, which is kilo. And so that's my 14 kilowatts right there. So the exponent is what it's going to be showing on the calculator screen just to the right of the E. 14 E3 means 14 with a 3 exponent, which is telling me kilo is the prefix that I need. Once you have the calculator in the engineering mode, as you want it to be, Anything you put into the calculator, do any sort of a calculation, it should give you the result in engineering uh, notation. So you've already got the result laid out the way you want it to. As I transfer that to paper, I'll replace that exponent with the proper metric prefix. The other thing that we want to remember, because we could run into this as we're looking at some problems, not always will we see it this way, uh, but another way of writing these sorts of things. Um, is that 14 kilowatts, that example we were looking at just a moment ago, that could be written as 14 times 10 to the third power watts. Now that may look a lot like uh, something you may remember called scientific notation. And that's where we have uh, multiplied by some power of 10. 
And that's exactly what engineering notation is doing. It's like scientific notation with the, the exception that all of the exponents in engineering notation will be a multiple of three. In scientific notation, you could have 10 squared or 10 to the fifth or any exponent there. In engineering notation, the exponent should always be a multiple of three. So this is another way of writing it where we take that metric prefix and we replace it with the power of 10 that that represents. And so some problems that we encounter may actually express the numbers in that way. Your calculator is going to express it in that way. It's going to put the E and then give you the exponent right behind it. And so going back to our chart, uh, we are always able to convert from that exponent back to our metric prefix that we need to be using for that.